This meeting is being recorded. Sister Robert? Yes, sir. Okay, can you lead us in, 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 into prayer? Our Lord and our Father, we thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet. We commit this class into your hands. We ask that, Lord, your wisdom will go ahead of us, that we would, you will enlighten us with your understanding. And that, Father, Lord, our lives will not remain the same. We ask that the light of your word gives us understanding in the name of Jesus. We ask for Otran, for Bishop, and we just pray that you hasten the steps of our colleagues that they come in together that we learn of you in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you take full control. We bless your holy name. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, page 16, um, chapter 2. Right, and um, the chapter is on source of Christian living. Um, can someone just tell me what what is your input on Christian living? Sister Roberts, what do you think about Christian living? Okay, praise God. Uh -huh. So I think that. that Christian living is living according to, so not living according to our human nature, the Adamic nature as um, Romans 8 puts it, but living by the spirit of God, living according to the principles of God's word and living a sold out life to Christ, where everything we do in our behavior, interactions, and thoughts is actually um, based on our love for God and from his word. That's that's what I believe is Christian Amen. religion. Amen. 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 Um, everyone agree? Yes. Yes. Um, in chapter two, the membership of God's family begins with, with the new birth following by a long, I mean, lifelong adventure in spiritual growth, reading and studying God's word provides nourishment necessary for this growth. Let me say that again. It provides nourishment necessity, necessary for the growth. It therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. It has to be a change. It has to be a change the way that we um, reason things out, the way that we respond, same thing, but it, 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 it has to be a change. It has to be a change in our thoughts, in our suggestions. It has to be a change. I'm gonna keep on emphasizing because that we cannot be the same person that when we would say unsafe. We have to change that attitude, that, um, that um, um, things that's not of God. And we tweak it in to make the justify it. No, it's wrong of using profanity. It's not godly. Yes, you cannot show favoritism. You have to ask God to teach you how to be justified, how to be honest, how to be loyal, how to think before you speak. This is Christian living because that we're not, not being the old self. That we're changing. How about this? We are changing new wine, new skins. We're not having that old wine, that old, uh, that old ways. We, we are helping people. We are thinking what we say and how we say to others, Christian living. <laughs> oh, good gravy. It says, furthermore, the privilege and belonging to God's family 
carries the obligation of living as a, get this, responsible family member as God's word, the Bible both described the kind of life that God's children should live and provide the resources. Yes, we're supposed to help um, the, 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 the unsaved, but especially the, the saved. Some treat the, um, the unsaved like the saved and treat the saved like the unsaved. Uh, go figure. And provides resources and consents Christian living. Let me emphasize this again. Christ-like. Let me say this again. Christian living. That means you have to look in the mirror and say, Lord, what do I need? Some of us get pimples, pimples coming up. We get something to clear it up. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible as God's word. The Bible is as God's word. People say that it contradicts itself. People say that there's no way a man could walk on water. Exactly. Exactly. But in, in God, all things are possible. Good grading. Hallelujah. The Bible repeatedly claims to be God's word more than 760 times in the Old Testament. And the author identifies their message as the word of God. Praise God. We're going to go stroll down to one um, to a next another paragraph where it says, during his earthly ministry, Jesus endorsed all three sections, the Hebrew Bible, the law, the prophets, and the writings. I want you to remember that. Please under, underline that because it's very important. The, um, the section... Uh, it was endorsed by three sections of the Hebrew Bible, law, prophets, and writings, emphasizing the divine origin of the Old Testament. Remember, the Old Testament is law. Amen? Yes. The New Testament also claims to be God's, um, God's word. Jesus proclaimed his own gospel message with such a divine authority. Those of you uh, that, that we're going over this, um, please, when you have time, go over the scriptures. Amen. That one acknowledge audience exclaim, claim, Never, uh, never man spank, spoke or spanked like the man that he, nobody could talk like Jesus could talk. He was excellent. He was extraordinary. Uh, further down, down, it says the, the apostles also recognized the divine origin to their message and writing, commending the um, Thessalonians believers, Paul wrote, when we receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye receive it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. See, man can scramble it up, but the word of God is the word of God. Amen. God. Um, the Bible clearly claims to be God's word. Let me say that again. The Bible clearly claims to be God's word. That claims is verified by Jesus who demonstrated, yes he did, his own divine nature and trustworthiness by his sinless living. Miracles fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy and most of all, by his resurrection from the dead. 
Do anyone have any questions? Minister, oh, would you like to read um, page 17? The authority of God's word. Because the Bible is God's word, it demands serious attention and respect. Several terms explain the nature of this divine authority. Biblical revelation refers to the fact that God has taken the initiative to disclose information about his nature, eternal purposes, and provision of salvation in the words of scripture. Much of this truth was not available apart from God's own communication of it, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 12. Biblical inspiration means that the Holy Spirit supernaturally controlled and guided the human authors of the biblical books so that they wrote precisely what God wanted said. As the human authors wrote from the background of their own experiences, using their minds and individual writing styles, they spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 1, 21. Now here, others, there are some that disagree with that. They say that that man was not inspired by God. But we have to know that God speaks to us and, and spoke to them to put down exactly what he wanted them to put down. Amen. Continue. Amen. Amen. And but Bishop, can I just ask or just say that, you know, also there are other arguments that as time has evolved, that some of these things have been edited and rewritten. So what is your take on that? Because it really gets me confused as well. Okay. I'm glad you said that. Uh, I remember 20 years ago, I asked the same thing. And um, it was a uh, uh, one of my mentors, Dr. Strivens, he stated, okay, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four gospels, the four uh, uh, gospels, right? Hold on. Okay. If you look, when they start talking about Jesus and different different things that events that happened, each man said it a little differently. It's like um, Minister O, look look at what happened. Look at that. So I'm giving you what I saw through that event, but you saw the same thing but your words was kind of different or your intake was different from my intake. We saw the same thing. You got me? You understand? Yes. Now, now the Bible has been diluted, been, been changed, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that it wasn't inspired by God. See, man say that it it, 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 it it messed it up, but it's still God's word. If, 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 if it was so far away that the word was not true, do you believe that the Bible would have still existed? Well, they're doing everything to take it away. So... <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, mean, they, I mean, I think the world is trying everything to take it away or to make it not valid or to confuse, confuse believers, you know. Yes. Uh, that, it shouldn't confuse the believers, but it would confuse those that uh, that's reading it that's not saved. See, they can tamper with the Bible all they want, but believers should know what the word of God says. 
Um, you get all these different versions of the Bible, but personally, the versions that I use is the King James, the NIV, and I stand by the Amplifier. And it gives me more, more clarity. That's just me. But most people, uh, there are some uh, beg to differ because of um, um, the author who did the Amplifier. Look it up. When you Google later on, I believe that it was a woman that who, who did the Amplifier. Someone didn't believe me, but, um, it, but it doesn't matter if it was a woman or a man, God's word is still going forth. Um, it's an old saying my moms used to say, you, you eat the hay and you spit out the stubbles. What's good for you? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All sir. right. You can continue. God's, uh, uh, God's authorship of scripture is not limited to passages where he is the direct speaker or dictated the contents. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Second Timothy 3.16. Even the choice of individual words was divinely controlled so that the term used would convey the right meaning. Biblical infallibility refers to the effectiveness of God's word in achieving God's intended purposes, Isaiah 55, 11. God so works through the biblical message that his intentions are accomplished. Biblical inerrancy is a technical phase for the accuracy of the biblical message. It affirms that what the Bible teaches on any subject it addresses is true. Properly understood, the message of the Bible gives correct information. Ultimately, the authority of God's word focuses on personal account, ability. God enforces his message, Hebrews 2, 1 to 4. Growing spiritually requires responding to the biblical message, which with growing spiritually requires responding to the biblical message with undivided attention, humble submission, and unqualified obedience. James 1, 1922. Okay, very good. But see, you hit something that we went um, we had before the authority of God's word, inspiration, infability, and inerrancy. And we have to remember those words. Remember, it's the technical uh, phase of for the accuracy biblical message. What is he saying to you? What is the Bible saying? And what are you getting the intake from? That's why he says the unity of God's word Although the Bible contains 66 different books written over the period of approximately 1,500 years, it holds together as the ongoing story of God's redemptive program to the world. You're getting something out of it. It's got to. The Old Testament focused primarily on God's dealing with his people, Israel. The New Testament continues the story with the founding of the church. The church is us, a group composed of believers, there you go, in Jesus from every nation, from every nation, this new institute placed the nation um, Israel as the earthly manifestations of God's people. Wow. Uh, we are on page 17 for those that just came in. 
the institute replaces the nation Israel as a earthly manifestation of God's people. These change do not represent the break with the past. A continually of promise and fulfillment links to two testaments, Matthews 5 and 17. Matter of fact, let's look at that. That's Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. Uh huh. Verse what, Bishop? Um, verse 17. Okay. I'm using the amplified version. Using the amplified version. Okay. Do not think Do that. Do not think that. I came to I do came to do oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, I'll, I'll read it. I, th I think she had him have a little problem. Okay. It reads, do not think that I came to do away with or undo the law of Moses or the writings of the prophet. I did not come to destroy it, but Jesus is saying I came here to fulfill it. So we have to understand that, that he came to fulfill the law, the prophecies. The future age of the spiritual blessing predicted by the prophets has begun with the ministry of Jesus. Luke 4, verse 16 through 21. Even the Gentiles reap outreach of the church is the achievement of God's initial promise to Abraham. In these, in thee, shall all families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12 and 3 and Galatians 3 and 8. Consequently, believers are biblical Christians, not just New Testament Christians, Insight for spiritual growth, insight for spiritual growth and Christian living come from the whole Bible. Let's go to Romans. What's that? Um, Romans. Chapter 15, verse 4. In verse 4. Everybody with me? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, hold on. And it reads, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instructions, so that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in promise. Let me read verse 5. Um, the, the, uh, verse 5 to you. Not may the God, now may God, who gives endurance and who supplies encouragement, grant you be the same mind with one another accordingly to Jesus, Christ Jesus, so that one accord you may 
with one voice glorify, praise, honor the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to his name. This is what spiritual growth, the insight for spiritual growth and Christ living. We have to mimic him. We have to um, uh, uh, read the word and apply it and, 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 and know that what things that's inside need to go because that we want to be Christ-like. We want to have the residue of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, God's supernatural control ensures coherent, non-contradictory biblical messages. Page 18. Sister Roberts, will you, will you like to read that? Okay, before. Page 18. The clarity of God's word. One does not have to be a seminary professor or even a pastor to know what the Bible means. Scripture was not written to confuse or conceal, but to clearly communicate God's message. God's truth was told in languages spoken in everyday life, setting forth the unit, the truth plainly. Second Corinthians 4, 2 was the conscious objective of Paul's ministry. The growth potential of God's word. The Bible uses several picture words from everyday life to show the great variety of ways in which God's word advances spiritual growth. As seed, God's word is the source of the growth. Matthew 13, 1 to 26. Young Christians grow spiritually because they are well nourished by the food God's words, God's word provides. First Peter two verse two. Hold on one second. Got a question. Is all God's food is good for us? All God's food. Yes, is it from his word? Like all of his word. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. It's good for all of his word is good for us. Okay. All right. Let's think about it. All okay. his food is good, but can can a baby eat a steak? No, no sir. take the milk of the word now until it grows to okay. 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 I'm, 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 Sister Abby, I want you part of this too. I want you to think about this. It's a process, a spiritual growth for us to dissect or to eat God's word. Not, uh, not everything is for us at that time. What some of us that, that are, are drinking milk, we want to eat steak, and it's not time for that. Or some want to eat steak, but can't digest the food correctly. So we have to take time of what we do or how we do it in God's word. Because that's why he said in his word, and he gave some apostles, he gave some pastors, he gave some teachers, he gave some this, that, and the other. So a baby wants to get, get ready to walk, but he has to learn how to crawl. It's a process of learning and breaking down God's word. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I'm really good teaching, but it didn't start in the beginning in 1975. The, good, the word was good for me, but it's the way that you approach it and the way that you take your time and asking the Holy Spirit to teach you. It's a learning process. Amen. 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 Everyone Amen. agree? It, it, it's good for yeah. you. 
but it's a process. You know, I, I remember when my mom, when my mom's introduced us with, um, it, it's, it's 12 of us, but um, the first four, the, uh, the oldest ones, myself and my three other brothers, um, when they introduced Chinese food to us, we had to look at it and say, wow, because we was used to soul food. We was used to mommy's food. So then now we learned how to eat other cultures or other types of food. But it went gradually to our digestive system agreed. Because you have a lot of people reading Revelation, but didn't get the basics of how to break up a scripture. Continue. Okay, Bishop, sorry to um, cut you. Can you hear okay. me, sir? Okay, yeah. so uh, my brother and I, we are constantly in these conversations about law and love and grace and spiritual growth. And um, it's interesting you are talking about this today. And so I dragged him to just sit right here and just listen because we're always, you know, arguing. And in listening to you, he has a question. So please, I would like him to ask the question and so we can move on because we do this every day. So. Okay. Question. question, go ahead. Okay, so um, you, good, good day. Um, you were talking about um, spiritual growth and I, I, I'm always caught in between being an extreme law, law, law commandments and spiritual laws and being um, grace, free spirited and trying to repent and love and just flow with appreciation and gratitude towards life. And I'm trying to understand what, what's, what's your opinion on being a mature or spiritual Christian on dealing with laws and meditating and memorizing laws and just living by if i do this wrong i have to i, I get this like re, re, repercussion yeah repercussion for doing this wrong or i just live in a graceful yeah i did wrong and i'm sorry god and i just you know move on so i'm, I'm trying to understand where is the balance or what is spiritual growth in that aspect hold on, hold on. i got you <laughs> I got you. I got you. And, and what's your name? Hello? Neri. My name's Neri. Oh, Neri? All right. Okay. When you say law, what are you telling me? What law? The law of the like, world? No, not law of like the world or universe. More like law of like the Ten Commandments. The, like the laws that, in fact, yeah, the laws that Jesus came to fulfill. Okay, okay. Now, first what you have to do is the law of the commandments, the law of the Old Testament. We just read that he came to fulfill the law, right? So now what you wanna do is look, look for a type, Google it, fulfill, hold on. The law. What is the meaning? Okay, hold on. Custom. Okay, I got what you're saying. So then, when you you battling yourself with the law, so if you make a mistake, then you ask God for forgiveness. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, but you're using the the the, the wrong term of law. Um, okay. You okay. you making sure that that you're not sinning. You making sure that you line up in the Word of God. It could be a battle that the Lord um, that the enemy wants you to continue focusing on the law of the Old Testament, or it's just living. How about this? The word holy, and you 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 making sure that you're not making any unholy situations. 
Okay. Okay. Now, see, when you say law and the and the Old Testament and so forth and so forth, then you know that's a. See my hands. That's a cross. Um, that's an X because that Jesus came for the New Testament, um, for to fulfill everlasting life, to fulfill the blessings of God. That's why we have been grafted okay. in as Gentiles. To, and now it's for everyone, every blessing and every promise that was, that was given in the Old Testament, we have a greater of, um, uh, relief for now. So when those thoughts of, of battles between you and your sister with law, think about and ask God, what, what is the true meaning of the law of God and the Lord of um, the law of God, uh, of Jesus fulfilling it? We just read it, but I want you to Google it and find more information on that. And then you're going to find out, I already know the answer. You're going to find out that your words was miss bless you bishop all right okay <laughs> okay thank you bishop you know, it, it, thank you because you got it right his words are really miss intertwined <laughs> okay and he says it like maybe he's not coming. Maybe he's not really competing with himself properly, even. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's a confirmation. See, sometimes yeah. I, um, you um, you have to look up the definitions. I'm a true believer of that. Um, yeah. And 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 find out exactly um, what is the uh, uh, what is the stop in your in your mind. Because yeah, okay. the what enemy that, wants you. Yeah, sorry, short, yeah. Um, what that law situation is is okay. I understand the laws, right? But then I I kind of I battle I battle with um the I battle with the understanding of um the the is it the scripture about love and like the yeah the ever the only one law. Is to love God and love, love your neighbor love as yourself. As yourself. So I, kind of, I kind of have this weird theory. I don't know. If it's a theory that if I do everything in genuine love, love for God and love for my neighbor and love for people, then I'm not necessarily sinning, am I? If like I'm doing it from a place of love. Love. I, 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 I got you. I got you. Your love and uh, is different from a godly love. We have to be wise. We love everyone. But then that's, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you of the godly love. It's a difference. You, did that make sense? I don't hear, yeah, I don't hear. Sense. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Thank you. Making so much sense, sir. Yeah, that clears everything. Yeah. See, I, 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 I love sinners, but I can't stand the sin. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change me of having a godly love, uh, but I, I love what God loves. You love what God loves, and you hate what God hates, and that's sin. But the enemy trying to twist it that you love homosexuality, you love this, you love that, you love guide people that are, no, no, Lord, Lord, guide me, guide me in this. I want to get it right. And, and the Holy Spirit will teach you. Amen. 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 That's great. Thank, Thank you, you, Bishop. Thank you. Okay, I, 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 I'm I'm hoping that that answer your question. <laughs> but it, me, it did. I, I'm, I'm, thank you, Bishop. I think I'll have peace for one week. Just a week. Yeah. <laughs> what you what you what you do is, um, let me put it this way, because I'm I'm googling 
godly love. Um, it's a meaning of God love. How can God love? Okay, da 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 da. Um, when you have chance, look up godly love. Okay. All right. Okay. We're, Thank we're, you, Rachel. You, you are very welcome, Sister Roberts. Yes, Bishop. Okay. Where where are we? <laughs> So we are at the growth and potential of God's word. Okay. Continue. It says the Bible uses several picture words from everyday life to show the great variety of God's ways in which God's words advances spiritual growth. As said, God's word is the source of the growth. Matthew 13, 1. Matthew 13, 1 to 26. Young Christians grow spiritually because they are well nourished by the food of God's word, by the food God's word provides. That's where we stopped. First okay. Peter 2, 2 and 1 Timothy 4, 6. Mm. Using the Bible as a mirror enables believers to evaluate the consistency of their Christian living. James 1, 22 to 25. When Satan attacks God's people, God's word serves as the sword of the spirit. That offensive weapon which defeats the enemy. Ephesians 6, 17. Like at... light. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry to interrupt you. But I, I want everyone to get clarity. And um, that's Ephesians. Let's hold that spot. Ephesians 6 verse 17. Okay. Hold on. And that's verse 17. Here we go. And take the helmet of salvation. We should know this scripture. Everyone that's on here should be familiar with this. And take the helmet of the sword and the spirit of the word. Let's go, um, let's go to verse 16. Yeah. Above all, lift up the perfective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flame arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is, here we go, the word of God. Verse 18, with all prayers, petition, pray, with specific request at all times on every occasion and every season in the spirit and with this in view stay alert with all pres preservations and petition interceding in prayer for all God's people. He's given us the weapon. He's given us the tools. And Paul um, had to say the helmet and the shield and the sword because it was in that time that the, the, um, the Christian Jews could receive him with the sword and with the shield and with the helmet back in those days. And that was one of the ways for them to understand what he was saying about the word of God. Amen. Go ahead. Like light illuminating a dark path, biblical principles provide guidance in daily decision making. Psalm 119 verse 105. God's word is a tremendous resource for Christian growth and living. Amen. 
Amen. I like the word word where it says tremendous resource for Christian growth. You want to grow? Begin to read the Bible. But it's how you read the Bible, though. (laughs) uh, Some of us, we read the Bible like a comic book, uh, like a love story, which it is a love story, too. But um, we have to, well, this is Bishop Thomas. Break the words down. What is the author is saying? Remember the words, exegesis and eichesis. What is he saying at that time? The shield, the helmet, and the sword. At that time, what is he saying now? To me, what am I getting out of it? What are you getting out of it? It's the word of God that we slay the enemy. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. So in our mind, we're saying the word is sharp. Every time the devil comes, it's sharp. I'm going to cut you deep and wide with the word. So how can I do that? By knowing the word. Great is he that's in me, that he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, through Christ that strengthens us. How about that? So we use the word for protection. We use the word because that we believe in the word. Mm. Glory be to his Hallelujah. name. Um, the adequacy of God's word after declaring the divine inspiration of scripture, Paul makes a surprisingly bold statement in 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Let's 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 see that. What's that second Timothy? And chapter sixteen, right? No, three. Chapter Chapter three, verse sixteen. And and it reads. Let me get it. Let me get it. All scriptures are oh, this. This is perfectly done. Um, all scriptures is breathed, given to the divine inspiration, and is profitable for instructions, for conviction of sin, for correction in, of error, restoration to obedience, training for training in righteousness learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicity and privately, behaving honorable. There you go. Behavior. How's your behavior? Hello. Honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. In other words, we have to be honorable. The world has to trust us. Oh, that's a that's a woman of God. That's a man of God. I can I can go to them. Uh, verse seventeen, so that the man of God may be complete, proficient, outfitted, thoroughly equipped in every good work. Listen, he said every good work, not a seventh or eighth good work or one eighth work but to the fullness there are uh, most people some people um, they say that it's it's impossible to say save that's because you're not making no effort it's only in your head but not in your heart Ooh, i'm gonna preach that yeah preach on pre- hallelujah that's the thing we have it here and not in our heart, and we're not applying the word. See, you may know it, but are you living it? That's where spiritual growth. This is how the words that we just read start to take root and start to grow in us. And that's the that's the thing. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna leave off 
and you can go to chapter, I mean, um, uh, page 19 next week. Please read over it. I, I, if we go into the slides, I let you know um, by Monday or by Friday that we, we're going to put a whole okay. bunch nine and then go into the slides. But um, um, I'm, I, I just thank God for what he's yet doing. Let me um, cut off the uh, recording. But before we do that, we're going to ask our sister Abby to lead us out of prayer, um, into prayer. Hello. Hello, sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. In, in, in Jesus' name, amen. In the, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Sir, did you ask me to pray? Yes. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, I wanted to be sure. I, I, I heard well, sorry. In Jesus' name, amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. Father, we worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful study you have shown us. We thank you, Lord, for your awesomeness. We thank you, Lord, for our bishop that has taken out his time, his energy, his resources, Lord, to give us your word in just a very, 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 very beautiful moment. And it's nothing, you know, just very... It's so humanitarian. Father, we thank you for his life and we pray that it will be well with him and all that concerns him. Continue to grow, make him grow, Lord, in you. That your blessings that is rich, Father, Lord, continue to be bestowed upon him in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, mm -hmm. Lord God, that you continue to bless him beyond his imagination in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for his life. We thank you, Lord, for every one of us that are listening and are hearing your word. Father, Lord, may your word manifest in our lives, in our daily lives, in our daily activity, that may we always speak your word, speak your truth, and let everyone know who you are in our lifestyle, in our words, and in our actions. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your mercies and your rest forever. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that your mercy is with us. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have given to us. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 That was great. Hold on. Let me stop.